Hello, it is Friday, May 14th, 2010, my favorite day of the year, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. Why is it my favorite day, you might ask? Because today, May 14th, is my birthday! I am 28 today, so yay, happy birthday to me. So let's go ahead and get on with the news. In a story I mentioned earlier this week, some indie game developers got together and created the Humble Indie Bundle, which was five video games for whatever price you wanted to pay. Now, over the original course of time this was available, they raised over a million dollars. Because they raised so much money and they did so much work for charity because of this, they decided to go ahead and extend the bundle so it's available until May 15th, tomorrow. If you hadn't noticed, I've got a link to the video right over here, so go check that video out. It's got a link to where you can actually buy the bundle and support this cause. They're actually donating about 30% of the proceeds to charity. In news directly related to that humble indie game bundle, four of the five games that were initially offered are now going open source. Aquaria, Gish, Luguru HD, and Penumbra Overture are all going to be going open source. The Luguru HD project, they've already started open sourcing it, but they haven't quite finished it yet. After a bit of a hiccup, Fedora has decided to push back the release of Fedora 13 until May 25th from the original May 18th release date. As I mentioned before, they've actually pushed back the project one time already, so hopefully they'll be able to meet their May 25th release date. I've used Fedora 13's beta and it works very nicely. They've actually got a release candidate out, but it's still not the final release yet. That said, I will be doing a review of the final when it comes out, so look forward to that. In Ubuntu news, because you know everybody loves to hear Ubuntu news, Mark Shuttleworth announced in his keynote at the Ubuntu Developer Summit that they're going to be creating a whole new desktop interface for Ubuntu 10.10's netbook edition called Unity. It looks to be a little more minimalist than the current one is, but at the end of the day it is still GNOME-based, so it's going to be about the same performance as GNOME is currently. There are some key differences between this new Unity interface and the existing netbook remix and GNOME versions. Most notably, there is a new panel and a new launcher, there are screen shots on the Canonical website. I'll put a link down in the show notes for that, so go ahead and check that out. In a post from Mandriva Linux Online, they've said that they're having some financial difficulties, and the only way that they're going to be able to keep the company afloat is actually to sell it to somebody else. What does this mean for existing Mandriva users, and for people who use derivatives of Mandriva, like PC Linux? The future is kind of uncertain when it comes to that. And of course, the biggest news of the week, the biggest news possibly of the entire year, on Wednesday, May the 12th, Steam for Mac officially released. Well, with that, Valve has actually announced that Steam for Linux is on the way. Yes, we already had an idea that it was coming, but we didn't know for certain. But now it looks like there's going to be some games coming to Linux gamers. From what I've read, it looks like any of the games based on the Source engine are going to be the first ones that come to Steam for Linux. So Half-Life 2, Counter-Strike Source, Team Fortress 2, Portal, some other things like that. Pretty much whatever comes in the orange box and anything that's released since then should be coming pretty soon. And the Steam Linux client should be available by the end of summer. Well, that's about all for this episode of This Week in Linux. Thank you for watching. Happy birthday to me. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you Monday with a new episode of an intro to Caden Live.